number 28 we are given this suggested structure of c3 or uh, c6h6 and then they ask us if we were to replace two hydrogens with chlorine atoms how many unique structures could we possibly have so as a reference point i will just choose one of the hydrogen to be replaced okay let's say maybe this hydrogen was re replaced by chlorine this will be a reference point where else can we put the other carb the other chlorine such that we have a unique structure right so if you were to change this hydrogen to a chlorine this will be our first unique structure right this chlorine in these two positions if you would instead to put the other chlorine here this will be our second unique structure right and then you should be aware that putting the chlorine here or here actually give us the same structure so I label this both as possible positions to give us the second unique structure the third unique structure is when we replace the chlorine at positions here and here or here I should say okay so putting the the chlorine in the top position okay this is the third unique structure it's the same as if we don't put it here we put it in this so certain positions give us the same structure you have to be careful doesn't mean there are five positions we have five structures some positions is exactly the same due to the rotation so we have three unique structures Twenty nine. We have this compound, and they're asking us what's the ratio of carbon dioxide to water produced. The hydrogens and the carbons are not explicitly drawn out, so if you were to draw, I would to draw out the tail end carbons and all the other hydrogen bonds, right, making sure the carbons all have four bonds. We will end up with this structure. So we counting the carbons, we have 10 carbons in total and 16 hydrogens. Once you have that, you can form a combustion table or combustion equation to make sense of it. Your carbon dioxide is formed from the is dependent on the number of carbons. So we have 10. Your water depends on the number of hydrogens, H2 will be 8 here for the balancing right, it doesn't matter whether we balance the oxygen here or not it's, it's, that's not really our concern but what is more important is 10 moles of carbon dioxide will be formed together with 8 moles of water so ratio is 5 is to 4 right, in simplest terms number 30 what is the organic product when the amide is boiled in excess sodium hydroxide so this is the structure the amide the bonds will be broken here and then it might appear that we have our two separate molecules okay. let me do that again when the bonds are broken I'll do the reconstruction step by step the bonds are broken it seems that we have this incomplete molecule and this incomplete molecule right and then we visualize what might be the original molecules before before they were joined so we this will be the OH and this will be the H and then finally we look at the en environment that they are React, they are boiled in excess sodium hydroxide so this is an alkaline environment and we look at the molecules we see which one will further react with the alkaline right this is an acidic group in an alkaline environment it will actually form the salt instead
uh, this is alkaline and it's three so it will not be reacting any further so break the bonds right, form back original molecules and then see which one actually will react in the given conditions so we have two molecules here okay, this is option D Question 31, the element PC, you can refer to the data booklet to get the info that it has 43 protons. So once you have that, it's a pretty easy uh, approach to calculate the number of protons, electrons and neutrons. Right, protons and electrons are the same for the atom, electrically neutral. So neutrons is 99 minus 43 so you will have 13 more neutrons and protons so this is correct 43 protons straightforward nucleus will be protons plus neutrons uh, which is essentially the number 99 here so all three statements are correct Number 32, urea, this structure, what's the angle X here? Or what is statements of the structure is correct? Angle X here, we have three bond pairs, no lone pairs here. All the electrons are used up. So there are no lone pairs here, three bond pairs. So it will be trigonal planar, 120 degrees. The molecule has has two pi bonds, right? The molecule only has one pi bond. There's one pi bond and one sigma bond in this double bond. Molecule has only three lone pairs of electrons, right? There are only two lone pairs one at the each nitrogen so only statement one is correct number 33 extraction of aluminium which one which statements are correct aluminium oxide has very high melting point right it is a ionic compound the high charges and the small radii of the ions will mean that it has strong ionic bonds, it will have high melting point. Bauxite is the name of the mineral of the iron aluminum oxide ore, right? It is not the impurity that's added to it. What is added to the aluminum oxide to lower its melting point is the creolite. So statement two is wrong. Right by the combinations, we should be aware that there's no way that statement three is correct. Okay, but we look at the statement: oxygen produced at the graphite cathode reacts with the graphite to produce CO two. Usually, they will try to trick you by switching the electrodes around. Oxygen is produced at the anode, not the cathode. Okay, because it is an oxidation reaction. Oxidation reactions takes place at the anode. Thirty four. Increasing the pressure of gaseous reactants. Why does it increase the rate of reaction? When you increase the pressure, you squeeze the Ga the gas molecules closer together so you are increasing the concentration okay allowing them less space to move around so they will have more chances of collision per second the molecules will not have greater energy
because you have not changed the temperature. Right, molecules will have the same energy as before. It's just that they bounce off each other with more frequency. Raising the pressure doesn't lower the activation energy. That will require the addition of a catalyst. So only statement 1 is correct. Thirty-five, manufacture of sulfuric acid. Some of the main stages. The first one is sulfur. Sulfur ores are burned, and then we get sulfur dioxide. And then the sulfur dioxide, we try to convert it into sulfur trioxide using a catalyst. The vanadium five oxide is the catalyst. So statement two is correct. And because this stage is pretty. Um, it's quite re quite reversible. We actually increase the yield using, or uh, we improve the speed using a catalyst. Right. So this stage is actually a reversible reaction. Thirty six group two sulfates. So the solubility of sulfates and hydroxides for group two, you have to know the trend. For hydroxides, as you go down a group, the solubility increases. Whereas for sulfates, as you go down a group, the solubility decreases. So let's look at the st statements or we look at the group 2 order. Right, this is, can be obtained from your date, um, your periodic table. A sulfate that is more soluble than barium sulfate. So we have barium sulfate here. A sulfate that is more soluble than barium sulfate basically actually means all the possibilities are uh, all all of these are possible because all of them are above barium their sulfates are more soluble than barium so this one doesn't give us any much help okay let's look at the next statement a hydroxide that is more soluble than calcium hydroxide so calcium hydroxide is here hydroxides that are more soluble than calcium hydroxides are hydroxides that are below calcium hydroxides so we have strong team. Magnesium, beryllium is out. So only statement one is possible. Thirty seven structure of an alkene molecule. Which one about this molecule is correct? All the carbons are on the same plane. Right, we have carbons that are sp3. So if you have sp3 as your joining carbons, this sp3 that joins the rest, sp3 here, they will be tetrahedral angle to each other, so they will not be lying on the plane. So one is out. Geometric isomers, okay, focusing on the double bond here. So what we can have, if you just focus on this group, a CH3 group, this might be a trans isomer. And if the CH3 was on the same side, this will be the cis isomer. So it's possible for it to have geometrical isomers. Optically active means we have to look for a chiral carbon. Right, this carbon is joined to four different groups. One, two this big chunk here and the methyl group so it is optically active as it contains a chiral carbon so statement 2 and 3 are correct